what I wanted everyone to know before we get started. You look so tan and so beautiful. Thank you. And I know that someone is going to say something about how I don't look tan. I think you do look tan. Is it, it, you're tanner than when you left. I don't know if that's true. I had a spray tan when I left. <laughs> well, without the spray tan, you're tanner than you left. I will agree to that. But will you agree that I sat outside for a good chunk of time and it's not like I was layering on sunscreen every chance I could get? Did I wear sunscreen? Of course, you should always wear sunscreen. But I really laid out and I was out. We were driving a convertible. So like my shoulders should have gotten more sun. I feel like the only thing that really got sun was my face and it was more of like a slight burn. I just burn and then I go back to pale. Well, I think the 45 SPF is what set you back. You always, you wore the 45 SPF the majority of the time. And I will say when I wore the 45 SPF, my, like my tan progression did not progress the same way as it was when I was wearing the 15 SPF majority well, of the trip. Part of it was we were running out of the 15, so That's I didn't want to use all of it. But the other part is, is that with I, as I was telling you, sunscreen's all about the amount that you use. It's kind of like serving sizes. And so you might be using a 15 spray, but the way that you spray it and the amount you put on, it's really like you put on five. And so I'd rather air because I know that I don't like to like heavy coat things on. I'd rather air on like the higher SPF. And then I didn't like reapply it a ton of times at all. I maybe like applied it once a day, maybe twice. I mean, you're, you know, the tan that you, it's not like you were just sitting inside the whole time. So that's what I'm saying, but I just don't know why I'm not golden brown like you. Oh, I also have continued to be outside since we got home. Since we got home, what, a day ago, basically? Three days ago. Three days I've ago. been outside, but it's also been raining. Just get out there when the sun's out there. I did on the day that it rained. I went on two walks when it was nice out. Cool. So I just am doomed to paleness. I guess so. So for St. Bart's, we had neither of us had ever been before. And since being, what would you recommend someone else do if they were to go to St. Bart's or even would you recommend it? To even further say of how little I knew, I didn't even know what St. Bart's was before you brought it to me. I had never even looked it up as a place or knew anything about it. So I literally knew nothing. Um, the extent of uh, the research that I did prior was to figure out what type of car was recommended to rent. And I did that through Reddit. So as much as, you know, Reddit's going to help me. So that was the extent. And now that I have been there, I would highly recommend it. It was fantastic. It was one, it was my favorite place that I've ever been myself. I've never been somewhere that is so pretty and the colors are so vivid and the trees are so green and the ocean is so blue and the, the, the beauty of the, the mountains and the rocks. And, and I don't know, it was just really, really nice. And, um, like, uh, we've said since we've gotten back that we've just become their biggest spokesmodels. So, um, so yeah, St. Bart's was, was awesome. And it was, greater than my expectations. Uh, we'll probably dig into the the place as a whole. And I don't want to spoil any of that because I've I've got my own kind things to say there too. <laughs> but um the island itself was amazing. It and like and I've been to multiple you've been to multiple Caribbean islands. No, I have not. Oh well I think you've been to a few. You've been to Saint uh the Turks, Turks and no, Caicos. I swear. <laughs> You've been to Aruba, though. So. I have been to Aruba, yeah. <laughs> but I've been to multiple Caribbean islands, and they're beautiful. Like, Grand Turks had the, some of the most clear water I'd ever seen. I went on a cruise there uh, with my family, and they were all really nice islands. But this one was just another step. It was insane. And I felt like there were so many moments where I found myself just – like standing and staring off into whatever we were looking at. And even mid conversation of just like looking around and being like, wow, it's gorgeous. I, I just need to take this all in. And one of my favorite pictures that you took of me, which, you know, is a tall task because you took a lot of bangers. I mean, Instagram husband to the maximum even got injured for me. So we'll, we'll get to that. But uh, one of my favorite pictures that you got of me was when we're at the beach club of uh, Laitoni and we are sitting there and just the view is insane. 
And I just remember smiling and being like, look at me. I'm the happiest I've been. It's beautiful here. And Alex snaps a picture of me and I thought maybe the angle or something about it. I don't think I had on like really any makeup that day. I was like, probably not going to be that great of a picture. And I like, you can just see so much joy in my face. And it was like the views of themselves were just insane. The views were so insane that I looked back on my camera roll and I've got the same picture <laughs> uh, many times from different days. It was like I was equally fascinated each day that I saw it that I ripped out my phone to take a picture. And then as I go back, I'm like, oh, I already got this exact picture, basically. I found many of those, an embarrassing amount of those on my phone. I have never, well, I've taken a lot of pictures of you, but that was probably the most pictures that I have taken of you in a single setting. It was nice to, sh to see, it's going to sound odd to say seeing you with your phone out so much, but it was nice seeing you with your phone out in that way because I know you love taking pictures and not just of me, your favorite subject, but you, like, I can tell when you get so excited and you're just taking out your phone because you want to take a picture of that moment. And I don't always see that in a day-to-day -day life situation. So it was really fun to see that joy for you, whether it was taking a picture, like I've never seen you take pictures of your food that way, uh, but taking pictures of your food, the view, like you, you were so fascinated and even we were driving home and there's like no taxis on this island. And so you do have to get a rental car. And thankfully, because of the research, we got a rental car and they have like a million Mini Coopers on the island. And thank goodness that they are all Mini Coopers because the roads are so narrow. And you... Like, I don't know with other phone plans, but for us, we didn't have service unless we were on Wi-Fi. And so we were so scared that we were going to get lost because you have to drive everywhere and uh, putting it in our phones and possibly losing Wi-Fi uh, on the drive. And there's only like four street signs on the entire road. Yes. <laughs> and it is so windy. It feels like, and especially being in the Mini Cooper, it feels like you're on a roller coaster of there's such steep hills that you're like ticking up it, it feels, because you can't go like full force because you also don't want to go too fast over it because the hill could immediately go down or immediately turn a corner. And so you're trying to like get up and we'd be like looking over the dash trying to see where, where the road was going because it was insane to drive there. But we were driving in the pitch dark one night. And well, our first night, the first <laughs> night we got the car, we decided, you know what, it, the best way for us to get introduced to this place is to drive in the pitch black at 7.30 at night, yeah. running late for our dinner reservation. That's the best time for us to try to figure this out. <laughs> the concierge like was so helpful and got us reservations at all the different places that uh, and recommended places. So we went to his recommendation and we said something about the drive and he was like, oh, it's easy. I'll show you on a map. Just like a few turns. He pulls out a map and it is like twists and turns. He's like, and then you just get there. Well, none of the roads are really straight. No. They're all kind of like up and down and you're they're, you're navigating through the hills. And so um, it, to him, because he's probably, he, I mean, he probably has been there his whole life. Mm -hmm. uh, very easy because it is only, you know, six or eight miles long, the whole island. And the airport's basically the dead center of it. And then you've got to the left and the right of it. And that's basically <laughs> all that's there. Yeah. And so uh, to him, it seemed easy. But yeah, taking that on the first night was uh, a, a little, little scary. <laughs> Over Yeah. Um, a little overwhelming, but hey, we got to our reservation um, and the, no damage to the car. Yes. Um, and on the way home, Alex was like, pull over here. It's gorgeous. And we get out and he's taking pictures of like the ocean meeting the rock and this beautiful view. And you know, it's pitch black, but he's standing there trying to get everything right and getting all these pictures. And he's like, these are so cool. Yeah. Uh, so it was really fun just to experience that. And I just felt, I mean, very connected to you, but just felt very connected to the island, so to speak, but like to where we were. And it was, it was really special. So for what you would recommend for someone now that we know that you highly recommend going to St. Bart's, what are some things that if someone was going, you'd be like, you have to go and do this? 
Before I give my recommendations, everyone should know that I went into this trip with the greatest intention of maximal relaxation. I was not going to party. I was not going there to find the best club by any stretch of the imagination. So I am not your guy for that. Um, but my first recommendation would be to stay at Le Tony, uh, where we stayed. T-O-I-N-Y. Just it's not how I would have spelled it if I you know, <laughs> was listening. So uh it was not in the the party area. It was off the beaten path a little bit and was very secluded, was very private, um, and was just the best from a amenities standpoint, the a best from quality of quality of small things. And and we are such huge fans of attention to detail and mm -hmm. quality in the details. Quality details. What are some of the quality details that, we'll just go back and forth okay. and, and really hype them up here. Um, what were some of the quality details that you saw within like the the villa that we stayed in and all those? Uh, there's so, I don't even know what the first one I should be is to choose, but I'll go with the thing that I've raved about is that the mini bar was free. They did have a few like high-end alcohols that you did have to pay for, uh, so it wasn't all entirely free, but but the reason I, I want to preface it's included in the room. It's not free. Well, what else would that mean? Like, I just think it sounds weird when it's because it's not necessarily free. It's part of what the room was. Well, OK. I actually looked at the description that says complimentary. OK. Is okay. that a good description for it? Sure. OK. So. Anyways, included was the mini bar. And the reason that is so great is because in St. Bart's, you have to like pay for waters when you go to a restaurant. Uh, they like bring you over a liter of water. And it was so wonderful because they would restock it like multiple times a day and made sure we always had enough water and they had multiple other things there if you were interested to be able to have. But it was so nice just to have water and a mini fridge and be able to have easy access to that. I would say the quality of the mattress. Mm, yes. The quality of the mattress was huge. I was very nervous about that. I'm always very nervous when we go to any hotels or anywhere outside of our own home to sleep because I, I just feel like I have a very specific bed that I like. And more often than not, the hotel ain't hitting it. Mm -hmm. And uh, their bed was extremely comfortable. They did a good job with the pillows. They were a little bit too flat for me, but I know I like a firmer pillow in general. So I know that that's a tough one to, to meet, uh, but the bed was great. The bed was awesome. That is such a good point because whenever we travel, the things I'm most excited to get back to are normally our shower slash our bathroom and our bed because it feels like I always have really bad nights of sleep because it's a way too soft of a mattress and then the pillows are nothing. But the bed was so, I never had once an issue with sleeping because of discomfort or wake up with any like aches and pains from being on a very uncomfortable hotel mattress. It was so nice and high quality and the sheets like actually felt like clean. Yeah, they're crisp. And even the like top one where when you go to a hotel, it's like they don't wash that top one and you just have to realize you should not touch it. Like the it. comforter you're saying. Yeah, okay. the comforter. But it's like everything felt, that was the, that's going to be my answer. Everything was so clean. Yeah. And we, we love us a good clean, clean space, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> and and they, they came by and cleaned the villa after breakfast every day and then when we went to dinner, mm -hmm. um, which was amazing. And when we say clean, it's not just like picking up a, like, the crap off the floor. They were sweeping, they were mopping, they were folding everything. I mean, it was immaculate service. And such good housekeeping. And it was something where you had a lot of privacy where you were staying. I think there was only like 15 or 18 actual like suites or villas, whatever you want to call them, but they were standalone for you. And you could put up a privacy flag, which was nice and no one would come. Um, and I know they have obviously the things you put on your door at hotel rooms, but it just was nice because you did have such privacy. It felt a little bit different of like, I have even more privacy here. And if you had the flag up and housekeeping couldn't come, they would call you and be like, what time is convenient for you? We'll work around whenever you're going to leave the room. We just want you to have a good time. Yeah. And, and the, probably the most important one of all of this is that the toilet paper was quality. Oh yeah. I mean, how often do you go to a hotel and you're getting single ply? Dwight Schrute is the landlord. <laughs> 
at your <laughs> local <Half> hotel <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you just have crappy, crappy toilet paper. That was not the case. I was very, very pleased um, for my sensitive cheeks that they got to use <laughs> regular toilet paper. Yeah, that was super nice. And I like, I didn't, I wasn't like, oh, the shower, I can't wait to get back to our shower. Of course, I love our shower, but it wasn't that I was like counting down until I could have a shower. And normally when I'm traveling, I try to minimize any time in a shower that's not mine because I just don't enjoy the experience. Maybe the water's rough or it like I have sensitive skin, so it can really break me out and it's just not a good uh, experience either. So I really try to wash my hair before I go on a trip, try to outlast my hair as much as I can, take some body showers to, you know, be a hygienic person. But I try to spend as little time as I can in the shower. And even with getting in the pool and in the ocean and having sunscreen on my body and having to get all that off, I never once was like, ugh, I can't, like, I don't even want to be in this shower. I was like, oh, I get to take a shower and this is nice. The furniture was also amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like when you go to hotels, you just either sink into the cushion or when you sit on it, you can tell it's dirty. Yeah. And neither of those things happened with their furniture, which was a massive plus from a detail standpoint. Mm -hmm. And it felt like they catered to the fact that they knew we were not from there. Like they were, for example, the plugs are different over there. And I thought of it like a day or two before we left of, oh my gosh, there's probably different plugs. And I ordered like a plug converter. But once we got there, they had like two plug converters for us. They're like, in case you didn't know, like, here you go. So it was nice to have that of just like, oh, I could have easily not realized that. And we would have had nothing to plug our stuff into. Okay. Off of the Laytoni fan train now because we're trying to make recommendations. Did you have any other? I have to give one more for Laytoni though, because we were just talking about, I just, the towels were so nice. Oh yeah. The towels were good. And especially because they're like towel, they had the towels for being out in the pool and everything. They were like XL towels. I didn't feel like I was wrapping myself with this teeny tiny thin towel that w I didn't even really want to wrap around me because it didn't feel clean or that it was just like an inside towel that I was bringing outside. It was like a nice plush XL towel and it was awesome. They were nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> recommendations while you're in St. Bart's. If you're not staying at Laytoni, we've got some things also. I would highly recommend, what was the first restaurant we went Bonito. to? Bonito. Bonito. It was fantastic. Bonito was it was delightful. I could have gotten, if we would have gone back there, I'm sure that there would be another meal and another meal that I would have tried. Um, the service was great. The, the ambiance, the environment, it was very cool. Um, so highly recommend. Yeah, it was delicious. As far as what to order there, get the tacos. You have to get the tacos as a starter. I don't care if you think you don't want tacos, you want these tacos. And thankfully they have one that stays on their menu, but the fish of the day was mahi mahi. So we got some mahi mahi tacos and I found a new love for mahi mahi. I had never tried it before this trip. Now I love it. Well, Sue wasn't much of a fish fan in general before going on this trip. Yeah. Well, I would say definitely not like a year ago. And it was probably about a year ago that you first got me to like actually try some sushi and start trying some salmon and eating some things. But it definitely wasn't something I regularly was eating. No. And then this whole trip, you had fish, I think every day, if not multiple meals per day, uh, where we would find the mahi-mahi, you were very excited to order. Um, did you try any other seafood that you enjoyed? Um, I did try other seafood. Uh, I had the, that lobster on that first, uh, it wasn't like lobster, like a big old lobster. It was like this lobster salad and not salad in the way of like lettuce leaves, but you know, it was a whole starter thing. Um, that was good. It had some different textures if I didn't know what else was in the dish. So that threw me off a little bit. Um, and I feel like I tried, we had that salmon that we shared. That was all right. I didn't love like how it was cooked and garnished, but that wasn't the salmon's fault. <laughs> I think, I think I mostly just ate mahi mahi, but you tried a lot of new food and well, not necessarily new food, but I tried a ton of different seafoods, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Um, I had ahi tuna. I had the mahi mahi. I had sea bass. I had 
the salmon. I feel like there's something else that I'm forgetting. You had um, cod. I had cod. I would say the least favorite of all of those, and it was from my least favorite restaurant <laughs> as well, which I uh, don't have an issue with kind of ragging on them a little bit because it was not good. Um, what was it called? <laughs> uh, I think it's pronounced tamarind. Tamarind. Not my spot. Everything, for whatever reason, tasted smoky. Yeah. Everything tasted smoky. It was a really cool spot. Like yeah, it's the, in a jungle situation. Yeah, the environment was cool. The food was just not for me. And I don't know if we just ordered the wrong things. I don't but think so. I don't I, think I could have ordered anything else. We didn't like really a ton of the things we got. Yeah. But it was a really cool spot. And they even have like you can sit. Almost all the restaurants are either open air restaurants or they're like outside and this one had like an inside outside and you could be like under the stars or more in the jungle um, or more in the like restaurant area. So it was a really cool spot, but none of our meals were hitting there. And it was kind of stinky because it was the last night. And so it's like we left the hotel and we were going out and like driving in the pitch black and then to not have like the best food after having such good food with St. Bart's. Ever in even that place, the food quality was insane. And I know obviously they're right there on the ocean. They can have the freshest seafood and they literally had on every menu like catch of the day. But even then, every piece of food, not even not the fish, was so high quality. And it agreed with me so well. Like I have never ever felt that confident or good digestion wise on a trip ever. And maybe not even in my day to day life have I felt that good. And a big part of it comes from the food quality because I noticed such a difference in how I eat and the quality of food. And it went so downhill on our travel day home of like coming from the highest quality of food and then eating like airport and airplane food. Um, and my body felt it immediately. But the food quality was insane. So we recommend Bonito. Mm -hmm. We don't, if you want to go to Tamarin to like see the environment, go. It's cool. But I wouldn't. I would maybe just order drinks, but even then <laughs> we didn't like our the drinks drink. we ordered were not good, but we were also trying new things. And so that sure. was, we, the whole trip, we were like really trying to try new things on the menus. And, and even with me ordering the mahi mahi a lot, they were prepared different ways, had different sides. And we were, we, that's the most I've ever seen both of us try of new food and new experiences. And so it's, yeah, I I don't think that I even knew what I was ordering with my drink, but it kind of sounded good, and then it just wasn't good. We went to Nikki Beach for mm -hmm. lunch, and Nikki Beach is extremely popular. I feel like um, Nikki Beach is beautiful. Mm -hmm. It was probably the the bluest ocean water I have ever seen in my life. The whitest sand I have ever seen in my life with these beautiful mountains, I suppose, behind it. And then, I mean, it was just so pretty. Um, so it has the perfect setup for a, a great scenery while you're eating. And at Nikki Beach, as we've talked about, um, we tried a bunch of different food. And on the menu, it had said world renowned. And I was like, you know what, if they're world renowned for this specific dish, I'm going to go ahead and get it. And it was chicken satay. satay, satay, satay. I had no idea what this was. I just saw chicken. I'm like, if they're world renowned, I like a lot. Of, I like chicken made a lot of different ways. I'll just go ahead and try it. And they bring this meal out and it is in two trays. I have this top tray that is just white rice. And I'm like, okay, I can get down with this. I take that tray off and I have soup. <laughs> and if you don't know me, I do not like soup. <laughs> and it wasn't actually soup. It was, it was. It was like a curry and it chicken. Was, yeah, it was a curry dish. Right. And the, the waiter set it down in front of me and didn't really tell me that there was two trays. I just obviously could make out that there's just rice here. I've got to lift it off. He just set it down in front of me and walked away. I've never eaten this kind of dish. Am I supposed to dump the rice in the bowl? Am I supposed to just like get a little bit of rice and then get a little bit of this curry chicken situation? I have no idea. Now, in this setting, you guys can kind of visualize what this dish looks like. It's over 100 degrees. I am 
pouring. So we're sitting outside. We have cover, thank God, because I can't imagine being oh, in the direct sun. I would have died. I would have keeled over. I would have been in the ocean. <laughs> you definitely would have been done. I'm pouring sweat. I mean, I am so hot. And then I get the hottest dish on. Like hot, like it's steam coming off of it. And then it's also super so spicy. spicy. <laughs> so spicy. I cannot get this across and it enough. hits you at the back end of it. But it was delicious. It was so good. And so it was It was such a good meal, but oh my gosh, was this the worst setting for me to get this meal? <laughs> so I'm sweating. My heart rate is definitely far too high to be consuming this food. I get about three-fourths of the way done with this dish, and my stomach starts to do reverse osmosis. I mean, we are doing somersaults. I'm getting punched, and I'm like, I have to go to the bathroom immediately. <laughs> Just destroyed my stomach, um, and I had to hold it together. <laughs> I mean, I was in pain. I was in, I was distraught. I'm still pouring sweat here. <laughs> now my stomach is having an issue and I'm very uncomfortable. We're sitting at a table. I'm not kidding you. The The table legs are more narrow than hip width for me. <laughs> so really I'm are. literally sitting, I, you guys may be able to see my legs. I'm like this. I <laughs> literally feel like I am in the fetal position, basically just my chest not pulled down and my hips are now on fire. So oh I've got hips God. on fire. Stomach is going crazy and I'm sweating. <laughs> But, and you can't get more water. It's yeah, cost and I can't get you. more water. And and the big thing that we found in St. Bart's was like the the waiters and waitresses want to give you your space. They do not want to bother you whatsoever. They're like waiting for you to wave them down, basically. Yeah. And so that was a big adjustment from being here in the states, where it feels like the waiter Let's or waitress. Let's turn tables. Let's yes, go. <laughs> we've got to make money here. Like we're trying to get you out of here. Where there, you could sit there for three hours. They don't care. The first night, we were like, "Do we just leave?" Because we hadn't seen someone in forever. We were like, "We've had the dessert. We've had your palate cleanser. We've been here forty minutes." <laughs> Are we supposed to just leave? It was it was such a different experience. The first couple of nights, we were like, I mean, what are we supposed to do? Uh, <laughs> but we figured it out towards the end, yeah. which was a huge help. And it also <laughs> threw the waiters and waitresses off when we would get dessert or we would finish our meals and we would say, we'll take the check right after we finish the meal. Because what the most popular thing seemed to be was that everyone would have their last glass of wine and have a smoke. Mm -hmm. cigarettes are still cool cigarettes are in guys let me tell you cigarettes are still cool in saint bart's mm -hmm. which was a very different experience it's very popular everyone is smoking a, a pack of cigarettes basically it's just part of your dinner and lunch and all that stuff yeah and especially since all the restaurants are open air restaurants then it's not like you're in this contained space so everyone's just got their cigs. And if you didn't know, especially since I said this was in the Caribbean, this is a French island in the Caribbean, which I have never been to Europe and I've only been to like Caribbean islands. And so this was extremely different culture-wise, food-wise, experience-wise, insanely beautiful. And at Nikki Beach, like it literally felt like we we're in like the French Riviera. It was insane how ev the whole picture came together. And like French is the main language there. So everyone's just French and they're just being cool, smoking cigs, <laughs> looking awesome, making me want to buy a pack. <laughs> I was thinking about it. Just should fit in, look cool. Well, the funniest thing is, is that Sue is like so anti-cigarette smoke and like how they tobacco smell, and tobacco, everything. all that Dip. like is the biggest <laughs> anti-fan. And then she goes on this trip and acts this way. It's hilarious. Well, what can I say? The French, they know what they're doing. I became the biggest fan. Yeah. I'm learning French. I'm on day four of Duolingo. So check back later. So we've recommended Nikki Beach, Bonito, and we have re not recommended Tamarin and obviously to stay at Laytoni. Is there any other recommendations you have? I would recommend if you do like shopping, there is some designer shopping there. Well, just shopping in general, you yeah. get basically 25% off what you'd be paying here in the yeah. States. Yeah, no sales tax. Yeah. Very nice. Well, it has to be more than that because, you know, sales tax would be what, like 7 or 9%? Or 12%. I don't know. But anyway, they were saying it was like 25%. And they could have all honestly been pulling our chain. I have no idea, but that's what they told us. No, it's because there's no, like, sales. They're duty-free, and then there's something else going on. But it is much cheaper to, if you are wanting something there. So 
it was nice because we also don't have all those stores here. So it was nice to just go and look at things, see things in person, see like the sizing and they had a lot of things. So it was nice to go through there and just kind of see. And it was next to a marina. So it was beautiful to see all of the boats there. Uh, and we actually went during like the low season, which if I were to make a recommendation, it is most definitely to go during the low season because they will triple to 10 times the price when it's in the high season. And it's also just extremely busy. It felt like, I mean, there was obviously people around us, but especially when we were at Laytoni, like it felt like it was just barely any people there. It was wonderful of just being able to be on vacation and not be in this extremely crowded situation. So um, to save money of not paying three to five to 10 times the amount, as well as being able to have a little bit more space to yourself, um, that was nice. It was extremely hot, though. I've never felt that kind of hotness. Well, I don't know if ever, but not in a real long time. It was, yeah, it was it was stuffy. And, and the the other thing I would say is that you have to be able-bodied. If you're dealing with any lower extremity injury <laughs> yeah. or you're not in a place where you can walk up a hefty hill or lots of stairs, this is not a, a place for you to venture because there's a lot of, you're, you're not really walking on a flat terrain no. really ever unless you're on like the main street that the stores are on and stuff like that. Even there, it's you're still getting a little hilly. Um, like for instance, my Garmin watch would, uh, my average uh, stairs climbed while we were there was like 67. <laughs> and when I'm home, I barely get 15. So, you know, just for reference there. Um, so that was a, a challenge on that side, but I still would recommend it because of the price. Mm -hmm. And, uh, another thing I would recommend was just like being able to do the hiking and the walks that we did. We didn't venture off too far because it was just more convenient to hike where we could walk from. Um, but it was really beautiful and just a ver very different terrain than we've like hiked or walked before. Um, and it was very peaceful being able to, to do that. So it would definitely be something, it was something that as we were getting towards the end, I was like, I'm going to be upset if we don't do this before we go home. And I was very thankful that we did go ahead and do it. Is there anything that you are excited to do next time that you didn't get to do this time? Um, I may do like some excursion. I'd like to maybe, uh, rent some jet skis. I think that would be fun. I think that going on more hikes would be would be nice. I would like to go in a time where it's a little bit cooler. I don't want to go in like November, December, January timeframe, but a little bit cooler would be nice because even if we did go on some of those hikes that we had, um, recommended to us, I, I don't know if we could have brought enough water to yeah. hike that long and we wouldn't have had like a, you would like all the bottles that they provided us were glass. And I don't know how comfortable I would feel with lots of glass <laughs> bottles on a hike, you know? Yeah. So I, I think that that would have been, I would, I would bring, I guess like the, the Yeti, you know, bottles to put water in and whatnot, but that would be, you know, something I would do next time. Yeah. Cause the heat of the day, it was like, it was man, hot. You can't just go out for an hour or so if you don't, have some place that you know you're going yeah and be up on a hill um i would definitely do like a jet ski or like a windsurfing that would be fun um and atvs instead of maybe a car i don't know the atvs i know we said that that would be what we would like to do i think about that in the sense of i don't know i don't know if that would, i don't <laughs> just, i don't i just don't know <laughs> well we know do not do a moped yeah, they said don't do a moped and I wouldn't do an SUV unless you oh. are lugging around, you know, five people. Yeah. Like because we, we could have in the Mini Cooper, we could have sat four if we really wanted to. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't have been the most comfortable, but the rides are not that long where it's not that big a deal. Um but yeah, the Mini Cooper I think was the best decision. The Mini Cooper convertible, if you're if you are to go, that'd be another recommendation. Mhm. Mm for sure. Well, the mopeds he said uh, one of the people um that worked at Laytoni had said that the deaths that happen on the road are like mostly mopeds. And he said all mopeds. Yeah. And he said it's even like all the people who live there. So he's like people who know these streets still there. Those are the most dangerous. But because it's the four wheels for the ATV, he said that was pretty secure. And I only say that because, again, the streets are so narrow. So it would be nice to have something even more compact um, because we actually got like 
included within Laytonism, picking you up from the airport and dropping you back off. So we didn't necessarily have to worry about if our luggage could fit in uh, to uh, uh, what we were doing or like lugging that around. Are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? Well, look no further. Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box, and we would love to get on a call with you. How did it feel being away from your work and routine and food and be trying to relax? Because you said your main goal was to relax. Is that something that you've struggled with when it's come to going on vacation? I have struggled with it quite a bit in the past. Uh, I actually had made a, a post about it when we got back. I'm just talking about how, like on our honeymoon, I struggled tremendously taking the time away. Like I was very anxious. It made me like sick to my stomach. Um, yeah, not fond memories on just ruining vacations for myself because I can't uh, or was unable to disconnect. And so this trip was one in which I have to put myself in a situation where I feel as though I earn things. And I know that that's not the best way to go about things, but it's just the reality of how my brain works. And so having gone into the trip, having completed the uh, Leaner Together series was significant for me, as well as all the things that we did within just work in general, the athletes that competed, the athletes who, who did well on stage, and um, all of the success that all of my clients were experiencing before we left. Like That was really important to me to feel as though that I earned that time. I know that I deserve that time, but just for me mentally, it was important. And so I was able to accomplish that. And really, the the first day was the one where I had to be very diligent with just don't touch anything, basically. Like stay off your phone because there's not really anything that I needed to do on my phone. Um, but it was like I just didn't even want to tempt myself necessarily because I had to get in the groove of taking that time away. And so the first two days, I don't think that I picked up my phone outside of taking pictures at all, which was great. Um, and I was able to keep that up for a majority of the trip Outside of taking pictures, I wasn't on my phone a whole lot, uh, which was an amazing feeling and a huge help for me because my phone is um, something that I don't have the best relationship with. I feel like my relationship with my phone is is one in which I know that it is part of my responsibilities within work and um, to be on social media and those different factors, but it is a source of massive distraction as well as when I am anxious and overwhelmed that I just kind of run to it as a coping mechanism of sorts. And so um, getting out of that habit and not having that be the case during vacation was such a nice feeling. Um, so I had a, a the the relaxation that I achieved was was excellent. I was able to sleep nine to ten hours every single night. Where when I'm home, I get six to seven, and seven it hopefully is good. But even then, when I get seven, it's generally broken. Where I sleep like three hours, and then I'm up in the middle of the night because I'm fucking worrying about something dumb. And then I get like four hours, and but I have to sleep in later because I didn't sleep you know throughout the night. And so not it, you know, it's one of those things that i teach so heavily on because i do know so much about it in terms of seeing it for clients but i also see it for myself of how much of a toll it takes and so i was able to sleep those 9 to 10 hours i was able to take naps throughout the day and just let my body feel so much more recovered i felt so much better and um my mind felt so much more clear and i was just able to to relax and and be present and it was such a good feeling was it difficult, especially coming off of a diet, to be in a place where you weren't like controlling your activity as much and you were having to relax and not just your brain, but your body have that time to relax? I don't think so because I knew with the food, the way that we were eating and those different factors, it wasn't like I was eating this copious amount of overall calories. And if I was, it was something that um, my body needed to be in more of a parasympathetic state anyway. And so the calories were going to be helpful to get me in more of a relaxed state. Um, and I needed to replenish some glycogen stores, to be brutally honest. And so uh, I didn't find 
much difficulty on on that side, especially as we were more active after the first really two days. And I always feel like when we go on vacation, the first two days are generally just like a full overhaul of recharging and just like trying to rest as much as possible and laying by the pool and reading and sleeping and that being kind of the the main gist of things and it being what my body needed. Um, mm-hmm. And so I wasn't overly concerned from a food standpoint and, and the quality was another big driver. If we were in a place where the food wasn't good and I could tell that it wasn't high quality, I would have been very annoyed mm-hmm. um, because then I would just want to be back home eating my normal food. Yeah. Um, but this was, this was an opportunity to have some different foods, to have different quantities of foods. And um, you know, I, I, for like to speak on the diet side of things quickly, I left at 203 pounds at like 203.5. I came back at 207. Um, today we're recording this. I, we came back what for, uh, we came back super late Friday. We'll say Saturday. Mm-hmm. We came back Saturday. That 207 weigh-in was Sunday morning. And today is Tuesday and I was 204.1. And tomorrow, I'm sure that I'll be up. I'll be in the 203s again. And so it's like, if, if I was to have gained any body mass while we were there, it was glycogen. It was fluid. It was not body fat. And I to to speak on this even further, I feel like when people go on vacation and they spend the majority of their time getting fucked up and then not sleeping and drinking excessive amounts of alcohol, that's when they're like actually going to see issues with their weight when they come back and the successive change in, in body composition or what have you. Um, because I think that if you are really spending the time resting and recovering your body and, and, uh, allowing for yourself to recoup that it would, it's just, it doesn't make sense that you just put on this copious amount of body fat. It just doesn't make sense. Um, so I was honestly surprised because I, I actually took my watch off for the whole time. And part of it is because I didn't want a like tan line because I thought I was going to get this really beautiful tan. Uh, But I also know that there's certain things that help me to even disconnect further of one thing was actually not taking my Vyvanse while I was there because that's something where it's pulling me out of routine and out of this, you take this and you work better. And it's allowing me to really have to force that relaxation to a certain degree. And same thing with the watch is I didn't want to be like at the end of the day and think, oh, you only got 5,000 steps today, if that was the case. Because I'm pretty sure that there were a few days in there that I got four or 5,000 steps. And, but it literally, because I was able to take it off, it, I knew it was exactly what I needed. I tried so hard just to listen to what my body wanted, whether that was going back to sleep after I had only been up for two hours, or it was going and reading a book for four hours straight, or it was whatever it was. I just really tried to do what my body was asking. And even in instances, I felt like, oh man, this was maybe more food than I maybe needed because I was getting like pretty full, except like at Bonito. Uh, Cause another thing is that they do, it's like odd if you just order a main dish and leave. <laughs> it's like you get the starter or appetizer, you get the main dish, you get the dessert, you talk for a very long time and then you leave. And so we would be eating bigger meals than we normally do. But I just felt so good by being able to take some of those numbers out and just be able to really tune into what my body needed and what I needed in those moments. Do you feel like you struggle to disconnect and relax on vacation? I I didn't struggle at all this time. Like I I don't know if I would say that I struggle a ton in general because honestly being out of routine helps me a ton with being able to flip that switch. Like the times I struggle the most with staying on top of my work is when we're traveling a bunch and jumping around to hotel rooms and trying to get our work done because we're in such a different routine. It's hard for me to work. And so being in a place where it's like my laptop wasn't out, there wasn't a place for me to sit down and work. Uh, I didn't have my watch on. Like it was so out of routine uh, and not like looking at my phone and at my calendar and checking something that I was able to just kind of flip that switch because 
I had none of that that normally holds me accountable or that might distract me um, to pull me into it because I like logged out of all my accounts. I was like no email, no Slack, no um, any of that because I didn't want that to take away from my trip. If you are a bikini competitor who has competed well at the regional stage or at the national stage and not placed how you wanted, I would love the opportunity to work with you. If you would inquire via the link in the description box, that would be the first step. And from there, we'll get a call scheduled and I look forward to speaking with you. Did you feel like there was anything on the trip that made you realize something that you wanted to change once you came back home? probably giving myself more time to to decompress and being home two days since we've, you know, and being back in work, I have not done a good job of that. I mean, we're recording a podcast at 8.46 p.m. So that is something that I had good intentions of doing. Um, but I also can't expect myself to flip a switch when I come back to the same workload that I left the craziness in to be able to now shift into giving myself this more time and those different factors. And in my mind, I, I kind of beat myself up because I feel as though that I should be able to restructure and adjust and put myself in that situation. Um, and I haven't been able to yet. And that's, you know, giving myself more time throughout the day is the, the big thing. Like I, I just cannot, I cannot sustain the aspect of working from 5 a.m. until 7 p.m. Like my my mind can no longer do it anymore. And that is a really hard thing for me to realize for myself because it's just been what I have relied on for the last eight years of my life doing this that I just can work longer than anyone. That's I've just been able to do that. I have a work ethic that I'm tremendously proud of and puts me in predicaments more often, it seems like lately, than um, positives at times. And uh, this is just something that I'm having to retrain as a whole and, and giving myself more time throughout the day um, is part of that. And, and what I want for that is just time in the evening to let myself calm down and, and have other other things to do, other hobbies to invest my time into um, relative to, to work itself. What are the things that you're wanting to change within your schedule when you can give yourself some space to maybe move some things around? Giving myself time in the evening to um, I don't really I don't really know yet and that may be part of why I haven't um, implemented it here in the first 48 hours of being back in work. Um, I I do want to get into running. I, I have, I'm on the cusp of, of hiring a coach to help me with my running because I know that my history of running is from athletics and that's all sprint based work. It's baseball, it's football, it's basketball, and there's not a whole lot of distance components to any of those. Um, and so I have a feeling that my mechanics are not correct, especially when I have tried to run or have ran. I've ran a, a mile here. I've ran two miles. That's kind of the longest distance that I've gone. And I just don't feel like my body should feel the way that it does. Like I feel like my joints and those different things shouldn't feel the way that they do. And so there's something that's off um, that needs to be addressed. So running would be, would be one of those things. I think that... Um, Getting into chess is another thing that I ha was having a lot of fun with for that period of time where I was able to implement it more and I've just gotten away from it. So yeah, those two things I would say are the two big rocks, I suppose. Well, with the running, also you have a very different body composition and you're carrying yeah, such different <laughs> body weight than that time. But uh, you had also mentioned like possibly starting the morning with some movement um, or like labeling your days as like red, oh. yellow, or green. So what was that like? So I had heard this from Rob Bailey. He, I have liked his stuff and he and Dana for a, such a long time. Uh, like I feel like I started watching their videos in 2011, maybe while I was in high school. Uh, and so I've just been big fans of theirs. And right now Rob is doing daily vlogs and I've been keeping up with those. They're just like 10 minutes and they're fun to watch. And he was talking about his work schedule and realizing that he has similar personality to myself, I suppose, and saying that he 
oftentimes would work six to seven days in a row of 10 to 12 hour days. And now feels as though that as, as he's getting closer to 40 and I'm closing in on 30, so maybe I just need to tough it out. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, that he has to change this. He has to give himself a full day off. And so he looks at his days as red, yellow, and green days. And the red days are the days that he's fully just at the at the HQ working for 10 to 12 hours. And he can do three red days in a row, but he's got to have a yellow, which is just a, a half day for him, which would be a six hour day. Um, and he has to have one yellow or two yellows in a row. And then the goal is to get a green where there's no work at all. And so structuring, I, it really resonated with me. And so I started this week with the intention of, of having that be the case. And because I would say that with those standards in place, I was having five red days, a yellow, and then maybe a yellow or on a, a great week, a green on mm-hmm. Sunday um, for the last. And and that's been like recent. I would say the last eight to 12 weeks prior to us leaving, I was having the Sundays where I would not work. But I, even prior to that, I was being more of like five to six red days and then I would have one yellow day and the yellow day was like, I'm off, but I'm working until two o'clock today. Mm-hmm. And so I'm making progress. I think that that's the biggest thing is that oh, I'm making sure. progress. Um, and so implementing that I think will be a tremendous help. Yeah. And I think that giving yourself some grace in this of the fact of not only can you not change everything on a dime, but coming home, like while we did get things wrapped up with work for us to leave, like we still came home and had a lot to get done. Like there's no way we could have started our work week on Monday and been like just getting back into work. Like we had to work on Saturday and Sunday to get those things in. And that's a lot also trying to get our bags put away, the clothes wash, all of those chores and different things that we're doing. Plus, we came home to some pretty crappy news that has been very consuming. So like in those instances, like I hate to hear that you're like, I haven't implemented anything where it's been like 48, 72 hours and we've had so much packed into that. And I've already seen you take initiative of getting movement in the morning. The past two or three mornings, you've gone for a morning walk by yourself, gone and gotten it done. Even the other day in the pouring rain, you walked twice. Yeah, it was wild. And like you're you're making the change now and you're going to continue to build off of that. But you also have to kind of get your feet under you where we thought that they were mostly under us and then the ground dropped. So. Do you want to talk about that at all? Uh, yeah, I, um, most of you guys, well, I don't know most, I would say, but if you're a regular listener or a follower, um, then you likely know that my dad was diagnosed with cancer, uh, in November and it is T cell lymphoma. He, um, we are so such a blessing that we live so close to a top cancer hospital. And so just 30 minutes away from where me and my parents live, um, my dad was able to go in and get treatment, went through chemo sessions. Um, It was really bad there for a while, but him and my mom have incredible faith and are such role models when it comes to just like taking it day by day and still living your life. And we got through all of that and he had two clean PET scans and a clean biopsy. And it just felt like we got over this really hard thing as a family, along with all other stuff going on in our life, like everyone else got stuff going on. Uh, And then my dad started to have some swelling that was unexplained um, and had a little bit of a fever. And obviously much rather be safe than sorry in these instances, went in, um, was told that he's going to need a biopsy because they couldn't really see everything or they couldn't say definitively, uh, had the biopsy and found out that his cancer has metastasized to the muscle. 
So T-cell lymphoma is already rare. And then also it metastasizing to the muscle, there's like less than 1% chance of that happening. Um, so we, uh, my parents have gotten in touch with uh, the number one uh, lymphoma cancer hospital. And I think it's the number one cancer hospital in general, um, MD Anderson in Houston. And so they were able to get in touch with them and uh, getting an appointment set up and they're getting the files sent over um, from the James here. And then we actually found out that um, it's a family member, it's an in-laws friend, um, has some connections with MD Anderson and they're able to like push things along um, for him to hopefully like fly to Houston this week and get a second opinion um, and figure out a course of treatment. So definitely not the news you want to hear, especially after like two clean PET scans and a biopsy. It's kind of like, you know that there's the chance and I even know people in my life who have had cancer more than once or even in a different area. Uh, and it's just wild that it's so close to having the clean PET scans and the clean biopsy, which was only just like a month or two ago. It wasn't that long ago to then hearing this and then not knowing enough to even know what to worry about, just knowing that it's rare. Um, you know, it's a sucks. lot. It sucks. <laughs> uh, so just, I'm just, I'm, even though this is sucky and crappy and all the things in between. And that's not what I want to be happening right now. I am like so grateful that we've had the access to care that we have had. I am so incredibly grateful that they're going to get into Houston and we have family in Houston. So they'll be able to stay with them and that they have flexibility within their work to go and do it. Like I, I know that there's a lot that I could complain about right now. And trust me, like the gauntlet of complaints and frustrations and whys have gone through my head. But at the end of the day, I can't change what's going on. And I can only think about like what I am thankful for in these instances to allow myself to keep taking the next step forward. Because if I don't, then I'm just going to be so consumed by my anxieties and my fears and what could happen. And that's what I mean when I say like my parents are such a testament to that is when we first got the diagnosis, they had said they had like brought our family together and they're like, we're not letting this take over our life. Like we are still going to live our life. I don't want any of you guys sitting around just worrying the whole time. We're going to live our life. We're going to take the steps necessary, but like this does not stop us living and it's not doomsday either. Like we still have fight. And I've heard that from so many people and people that are like cancer research or in the cancer field talking about how much mentality has to do with the survival chances. And even people like in the chemo, um, section uh, had told my dad of like how determined he is and that they don't have patients like that. Um, and so just to know that his mentality, my mom's mentality is so strong willed. They carry that and they lead the family with that truly to put me in a spot that I can have peace or um, calmness in this storm and just be able to trust that just we're going to keep taking the next step forward in these moments. So um, I, I'm, and I'm just so grateful for the the people that we have around us and the people supporting my parents, um, supporting my family, supporting like us individually. Um, I've had so many people reach out to me and it is so extremely appreciated. Um, and I think that the reason that I even have chosen to like talk about this more because last time it happened, I kind of didn't say anything until it was over. Um, and a big part of that was for my own sanity. Um, just because there were so many other things going on that it felt like I can't even, like, I can't even think about expressing my feelings in this way. And like, I just need to keep taking the next step. Uh, but this time it just feels like people are here to support me and willing to support me. And having these emotions doesn't make me weak at all. Um, it's just being able to showcase like we're all just humans trying to figure life out. We all have our own stuff going on. Um, and I know that 
like me being able to share it is for this time is the only way I'm going to get through it because I'm going to need support to, to make it through. Um, so give yourself some grace <laughs> about coming home and not starting everything. He's gonna make it. He's gonna make it through, though. Yeah. Well, not he's a, got too much fight in him. Yeah. He's too stubborn. Yeah. He's <laughs> too tough of a person to yeah. to let it beat him. Yeah. It's been a whirlwind of a couple days. It's been a whirlwind of the last ten months, but I am just like I can't say enough about. I feel like I just brag on Alex all the time, and uh, people probably think like it's you know people are like if you have a long caption for your anniversary, like I already know it's over, bro. <laughs> Um, or like you're overcompensating. And I'm like, I just can't say enough great things about Alex because he is the greatest person. Uh, even when we were getting our nails done before we left. And the guy, he does my nails regularly. I know him. We chat. And my mom was there too. And she was like about to say, do your parents like Alex? And then she he sees my mom give Alex like a huge hug, kisses him, says, I love you. And he goes, but then I realized like Alex is so great. Why wouldn't everyone love him? And I'm like, yeah, he is is so great. Um, because through all of this, like getting home, we had a crazy travel day and throughout the travel day, we could have easily snapped at each other for a million things. It was an insane day. Um, but then coming back to this news and also news about, um, some of the dogs in my family and uh, just being like so much to come back to, you've just created such incredible support for me and love for me. And, um, like allowed yourself to also express where your head is at and give yourself the space to do that instead of just thinking, oh no, she has a lot going on. I shouldn't talk about what's going on with me. And I've really appreciated that because it just, we need that flow to even be able to keep going. Um, and just even like yesterday, I was working on my computer, uh, trying to wrap things up. And I knew that we were planning to go over to my parents for dinner later that night, but it was like um, 10 a.m. And Alex was like, what do you need done today? Give me a list. Just go be with your family. And he's done that a million times before. Um, and like through last time, even days filming by himself and days that he didn't have the capacity to film or to give. Um, and he showed up in those instances. And like, I wouldn't have just gone over to my parents that day. Um, I would have been like, we're going over for dinner. Like, we'll see everyone then. I have a lot of work to do. But um, even you just giving me, and I know you weren't giving me permission, but like, it felt Nudging like yeah. a re reminder and permission of like, you can go and do this and it's okay. You, you might be a little bit behind on work, but like, this is what's important. Um, and you're just always so willing to allow me that and support me in that. And you're just my biggest fan. And I love that about you. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're so awesome. I can't. I, I like, I want to, I know we always say like, we couldn't do this without each other as far as PD, but like, I couldn't do any of this like without you. Well, I always say that there's an equal and opposite reaction to everything. And so um, whether you believe in God, whether you believe in a, a higher power of sorts, they're setting you up for an opportunity for a major catapult because this has been a wild 10 months, but it's setting us up for something very special that we have no ideas is on the horizon. We're just working towards it. And these are just um, events that are transpiring as we get to whatever that is and trying to keep our head on straight and take in each moment, I think is the biggest thing and being present and not allowing for ourselves to get carried away in emotion. Because I think that in these scenarios, emotions ride extremely high and individuals let that dictate their, their actions or how they speak to one another and those things. And there's just no place for it. And it's, you don't, we, we have a very finite level of energy each and every day. And to let some of that go to waste with things that you don't even mean to say is a silly waste of everyone's time. And so just always trying to keep that in mind. And I lean into my, my breathing and my breath work so heavily during these times before I, before I speak, before I, uh, take action and, and all those different things. And, um, this is just one of those scenarios where a lot of breath work, yeah. <laughs> a I, lot uh... of trying to calm down the central nervous system. 
I was thinking about that the other day of just how often I recommend yoga and why it's been something constant to some degree in my routine is because it forces you to have to get in tune with your breath. And I believe that if you can control your breath, you can control so much. Um, and just like you said, emotions can get so out of hand and being able to just take a second and breathe and get in tune with yourself. Um, that sounded very <laughs> raw, raw, foo foo, yeah. but like that's that's what it is. I, I mean, I just believe to my core that the most intense moments, if you can control your breathing, then you can figure things out. Mm -hmm. And I think that you you think of very intense moments, like a, a the first thing that comes to my mind is like a sniper in <laughs> the Navy SEALs. That's like the first thing that comes to my oh mind. My like gosh. you have to control your breathing and be very yeah. very great. Yeah, in that that is true. Um, as a, I, I, my mind goes to, uh, war and athletics and all those things. You have to be very in control of your breathing. You can't just be huffing and puffing. Like you may think that that's what you're doing, but your, you know, your mind is calm. And I remember whoop is a massive promoter of Patrick Mahomes. And there was a, I don't know if it was a Super Bowl or it was a later playoff game that Whoop had shown his score of where his heart rate was in, in one of the craziest drives. And it was the lowest that it had been the entire game. And he was so calm and collected at the most intense moment. And I would imagine that that has, whether it was, um, it was, what, what am I thinking of here? Um, whether it was intentional or it was subconscious, it was, you know, shown in the data that his his heart rate was down and he was controlling the moment. And so I just try to lean into those things. Yeah, I agree big time. That is it's it's changed my life as far as being able to to do that and um being able to just even think that before taking the next action because it becomes subconscious of being able just to keep that breath going and going. Uh, but it takes a lot of practice to get there for sure. And this is this is coming from someone who, I mean, I would act, I would react emotionally. And like, I, I don't know if I would call myself someone with a, a temper, but I am a very emotional person. Like I have a lot to to give. And and if if I am really happy about something, you're going to know. If I'm really upset about something, you're going to know. Like I just show it through my facial expressions, how I speak and all that. And so this is coming from someone who was terrible about this, absolutely terrible. And I have made such a large point of it and has feels like it's like giving me my life. Like I feel so much more in control every day. This podcast has been I mean, all over the map. We started out with a telling everyone that they should go to Lay Tony. Yeah, and we talk my about my favorite place in the whole entire Lay world. Tony and St. Bart's, and and then we got into um, stress management and allowing to relax, and then getting into the update of of where your dad's health is at, and now we're talking about. Um, yoga and breath yoga work. Yoga and breath work. I mean, talk about ping pong, ping pong. Yeah. We're all over the place. Well, now I see why we could do a three hour podcast. We could. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I, you guys let us know. Would you want us to just chat like this? I don't mind. I mean, yeah. This is what it's nine o'clock right now. We would be doing this anyway. I know, sitting outside, hanging out. So it's like, if you guys enjoy this, let us know shoot us a DM or if you're watching this on YouTube, leave us a comment because we can certainly do this. I enjoy this. I enjoy these type of conversations. Um, I find them to be tremendously helpful for me to listen to as well. Um, so if you guys enjoy it, let us know. Yeah. And I'll say the last thing about vacation, because I know that this is getting long. Uh, one thing that I'm taking away from it is just my need, definitely balance within my routine overall, but um, my need to spend time doing things like reading and writing. Because I, I love reading and I've like this time that I've spent away from reading, it was semi-intentional because I can get so lost in a book. I really put off all other responsibilities. Like I will just be late at everything because I want to start and finish a book in one sitting. But kind of like how we've talked about with Alex, if he had to find how different fitness types kind of fit into your routine so you could do them more regularly and not just have lifting 24-7, that's what I need to find within reading and writing is not just 
read nonstop, but maybe even the different types of reading that I'm doing. So I'm not just really reading um, like fiction books and thrillers of having different types of books in. But reading, it's so good to have time away from screens because I don't really count the Kindle as a screen. But it just also helps so much with your vocabulary and your writing and your ability to speak. And I find that I'm speaking so much throughout the day that I'm getting bored with the words that I'm using and just feeling like I am not expanding my mind as much. Even if I'm expanding it in different ways, I feel kind of stumped in that. And I didn't realize how stumped I felt until I read more and wrote some. And it was very calming and it was very fun to get back into. And it's something I want to be able to integrate into my routine. Um, and eating more croissants. <laughs> I love your writing. You're like, I love reading when you are in that groove. And so I'm excited for you because it's one of my favorite things about you. So, <laughs> Well, I am going to set aside time. I've been setting aside some small pockets to do things like whether it's working on something creative because um, I like I enjoy putting together posts and stuff for Instagram. And I hate when I don't have time to really like put my effort into something, whether it be the caption or actually making an informative post or the layout of it. Like I really enjoy that side of things. So I put aside some time yesterday because I was like, I just really want to do this. So trying to sprinkle that into my routine and take time for myself um, and just give myself grace, especially with all this stuff going on. I know that I can't plan things perfectly perfectly. And I have to be willing to make a plan and pivot from that plan. And that's just got to be it. I got to let go of the rest because it, spoiler alert, doesn't work out the way that you always plan. Anything else you want to say about the trip or Laytoni or St. Bart's? No, it was great. It was awesome. It was awesome. Super private, incredible service, incredible food. I, it's, you know, you guys know my recommendations. Top tier recommendations up here, like Jeff Ruby's, Nash Bars, Laytoni. It's in there. It has reached that top status just in one trip. So catch you guys in the next one.